People didn't know that I was a young black woman. Then when I would arrive and state my name, they'd say, there, well, there must be some mistake. Are you delivering something for her? Or are you here to meet with someone else? Assuming that I was an assistant or an admin or delivering food. And so those were humbling experiences for me. I did not get upset, but I was a little ashamed. And then I got proud to say, no, I'm here to meet with the managing director. My name is Emily Graham and he can see me now. Emily Graham has been protecting corporate reputations and shaping the perception of some of the largest companies in finance and business for more than a decade. She's now a partner and senior leader at a top PR firm, and she's only 33 years old. Born in Louisiana and raised in Texas, her rapid rise in corporate America wasn't without its challenges. This is how she got here. I had the best example of work ethic at home. My mom always had this drive to climb the ladder, and so I saw her getting promoted, which let me know that there was no such thing as a glass ceiling that I couldn't break. I went to Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas. I thought communications was such a natural fit. I like to give speeches, I love to write. I began interning every semester, every summer, in different areas of PR, and it gave me a lot of the experience I needed. So there were no time off for me in school. I was always working, but it really helped set me up for my career. Emily graduated just before the economic crash of 2008, but that crisis would become an opportunity. Credit markets have frozen, and families and businesses have found it harder to borrow money. We are in the midst of a serious financial crisis. In 2008, it was like having a money ticket. All the things that happened in the financial markets in the Great Recession, Merrill Lynch just happened to be white right in the middle of them, and I was working on them as a client, so it really catapulted my career to the next level. I got promoted five times in five years. One thing I learned early on in my career is that your relationships might come in unlikely places. And at my first job, the person who hired me brought me into rooms and gave me seats at tables that I would ordinarily not have as a young woman of color in PR in the South. In the first five years of her career, Emily helped to rebuild the brand reputation of Bank of America Merrill Lynch, while also counseling top executives at companies like Accenture, Southwest Airlines, and Shell Oil. She eventually left Texas and moved to New York City, where she realized how grossly underpaid she was. As a woman of color and as a woman working in corporate America, that is a contention point. I've realized if you don't ask, you will not receive, but you have to do your own due diligence. Nearly 60 years after the Equal Pay Act was passed, women, especially women of color, still face a pay gap. White women are typically paid 77 cents for every dollar paid to white men. For black women, it's 61 cents for every dollar. And for Latinas, they're paid just 53 cents for every dollar paid to white men. So when I had a job offer from another company, I went to my employer and I told them the number. And they balked at the figure. They said that I didn't really deserve to be paid that much. That's impossible. That's almost double your current salary. We are underpaid. Uh, that's statistics. So I learned early on that you have to champion and know what you're worth. Emily landed a vice president position and a healthy salary. She was in her mid-20s and working at a leading PR agency. But imposter syndrome set in. I was in over my head. So much so that within the first couple of months, I really thought maybe I should just resign respectfully and walk away because I don't, I don't think I can do this. And then I had a conversation with somebody at the company and they said, we wanted you. We see something in you. It reminded me of the conversation that I'd had five years ago when I was an intern, I got hired full time. Somebody saw something in me and that was all I needed to keep going. As I began to advance and get more of a seat at the executive table, well, a 26-year-old who was a vice president who was leading a multi-million dollar piece of business at this agency, I started to be perceived and treated as a threat. People began to wonder, who is she and what is she doing here? 
I ended up at Fleischman Hillard as a senior vice president. And within seven months, I was promoted to partner. And I became the only black female partner that's doing PR at Fleischman Hillard. So it's a lot of responsibility. Throughout my career, even academically, I was often the first and only black female. I was always the youngest, and that brought with it a lot of pressure and a lot of expectancy that I knew what I was doing, and if I didn't, it was gonna be a problem. But it let me know a couple of things. One, I had to be comfortable being uncomfortable. I had to assume the position of being a leader even when there were no examples for me. And two, I wanted to change that. I made it a goal in my career to make more women come along with me. What's the key to breaking that glass ceiling and getting to where I am now? Can't be afraid of some chipped teeth and hurt feelings. My lessons learned have been so many. I would say the first is underestimating and undervaluing myself, being my own biggest fan. That's something that I've had to learn. The second thing as a woman of color, you kind of feel like you have to apologize for the space that you are taking up. And you don't have to do that. I don't have to apologize for my hair. I don't have to apologize for the way I look. I can show up and be me. It's not my problem if someone doesn't get that. And I had to learn that that's okay, that I deserve to be here. <laughs>